Hello everyone, and uh, this is a random little New Japan video here as uh, it's been a, a while since I talked about New Japan as uh, you know with kind of everything going on in this month you know with the last time I talked about New Japan was for the uh, Wrestle Grand Slam Tokyo Dome show uh, back in July and a lot has happened in New Japan in this month. Uh, setting up before the uh, Siobu Dome show. Well, now it's the, the MetLife Dome, but the the uh, s former Siobu Dome, MetLife Dome show, the Wrestle Grand Slam show, which, uh, man, on, on paper it's not looking too good, but uh, maybe they'll change some stuff. But uh, really, this kind of last part of Summer Struggle, and kind of talking about uh, for this video, that's what I'm kind of mainly be talking about, this is the last end of the Summer Struggle Shows that happened in Cork and Hall, and also what's been going on in New Japan. Uh, obviously, kind of the biggest thing was the Resurgence show that happened in the U.S. at the uh, L.A. Coliseum that I did not talk about here on the channel. And uh, the reason why that was is, so I had just came back from vacation that week, and right when I got back, kind of was like trying to catch it up on everything, and also uh, the misses had... Uh, a tonsillectomy on the 13th, the day before, and I was kind of with her that whole kind of day before. I probably could have done it, like the, but also, you know, I was with her on the 12th, the 12th. So really, the only time I could have done it is right when we got back, and I was just trying to catch up on everything in general. Uh, but as I, you know, coming back from vacation, trying to do, like, everything that you do when you come back, unpack, and do all, do all of that type of things. But uh, the research show, just kind of on paper, it was something, like, I'm not really... As if you're a fan of my stuff here on the channel, uh, in the years past, I've kind of been a anti <laughs> New Japan US guy, and that's why you know I don't really talk about it on the like it, don't talk about the New Japan Strong shows or even kind of the more US driven shows. Uh, the reason why is just as a fan of Japanese pro wrestling, like I'm a fan of the Japanese pro wrestling environment, that type of product. I don't really care for the Japanese product being done in the U.S. It's kind of like an Americanized version of it. Like, I don't care for the English commentary. Sure, there is the Japanese commentary you could do, but still, it's a bit awkward, I would say, for me. I know it was still a good show. Like, you know, the I would you know, the Moose and Tomori Ishii match was a lot of fun. And Tom Ashi beating Lance Archer. Now he's the IWGP United States champion. And, uh, and then also, too, like, David Finley Jr. talking about, like, how he wants to go to Florida and leave, uh, New Japan and just kind of is tired of, uh, how it's going on over there, uh, which is kind of all he was talking about as far as instead of hyping up his match with Jay White, so I was like, well, he's definitely losing, you know, so it just kind of ruined that match, too, uh, and it was just kind of a, uh, it was, it was, a show that I didn't think going into was going to be, like, crazy good. Plus, I was also... My big focus for that weekend was Triple Mania, which was hilarious. But, so, I mean, Triple Mania was fine. I would say a lot of people probably would prefer the Resurgence show to Triple Mania. But I, I had a blast uh, talking about that on uh, Twitter. Uh, but for, you know, New Japan. Also, you know, what happened in this month is a show, Turning on Yo, which... Uh, you figured it was going to happen eventually. One of those two was going to turn on each other. I figured Yo was going to be the one to turn. Just felt like he was going to be the easier kind of... The, the Marty Jannetty to show Shawn Michaels. So he might as well just kept him as a babyface. But turning him heel. Which is interesting. But I think also too... It, it's probably for the best. Because looking at kind of the grand scheme of... Who's kind of the babyface. Who's kind of the heel of New Japan. Uh, a lot of like obviously evil is the worst, you know, since they've turned him, he's the absolute god off. like, he's been probably the worst transitioned main event star, probably, I, I can't, I couldn't tell you who was, the, like, the, sh the worst guy than him, as far as, like, New Japan goes, because, like, he's just the worst, like, he really is, the way he's booked, the way, you know, he acts, he fucking called Shingo Takagi a homophobic slur, which is crazy. <laughs> that should not have happened, but he did it. And it was like, step after step after step, Ghetto has made him worse and worse and worse. Or maybe his own accord if he was the one who, who chose to throw out the homophobic slur. And to have him go into this main event of the second night of the Cebu, oh, I keep on calling it the Cebu Dome Show, the MetLife uh, Dome Show. Uh, it's 
fucking a travesty. And it scares the shit out of me, to be honest. Because he has been god-awful in main event matches. Evil has. He's lost a lot, which he should. But also, at the same time, you gotta protect the guy if you're gonna put him in the main event of a title match. With the G1 coming up, you never know with Ghetto. He might try to do some crazy shit and try to ruin the product even more by putting the belt back on Evil like last year. Because it absolutely did not work last year. It fucking sucked. And it ruined uh, Tetsuya Naito's uh, double championship reign. And it's just a whole goddamn mess. That was. And now to go from... Y you get us back. You know, 2021, Ibushi becomes champion. For a little bit. And then Osprey becomes champion. Which sucked. And, you know, that's another thing. Resurgence. Osprey showing up. That sucked. And seeing people hype that up and defend that it's like why are we helping out and supporting someone who has tried to silence someone who was sexually assaulted i don't understand it and uh and then you know having at least he's going to be in the u.s so i don't have to see him you know but also too with the g1 happening next month uh, there's going to be some guys who are not going to be in it jay white's one of them uh you know as far as like the big big name goes i don't really give a shit about osprey i'm glad he's not in it but you're like, Suzuki, it makes sense. I can't. I think his last G1 was uh, two years ago, maybe three years ago. It's been a while. It, just his body can't physically do it, you know, and, and that's perfectly fine. The man has earned it. You know, he's in his 50s. Like, he doesn't have to do that crazy-ass schedule. That's fine. Um, and uh, you know, for this, you know, for New Japan's G1 strategy, so obviously... The Delta variant is very rapid, and it's spreading very, very fast, it seems like. And it seems like there might even be a potential of another lockdown, just the way it seems to be going. Uh, just maybe by October, November, you know, somewhere around there. Uh, it, just the way, if I would guess, uh, you know, still New Japan is still very strict on COVID stuff, uh, and, which uh, rightfully so. You know, you definitely should be, as uh, this, I want to say was last week, Shingo... And uh, Bushi had got a positive COVID test, so that's why they're not going to be on these last stretch of matches, or <laughs> last stretch of shows here, uh, to end out the Summer Struggle Tour that's happening in Corkin, uh, before the CU Dome show, oh my god, I did it again, <laughs> that life dome, as uh, fucking, I don't know why I have the CU Dome on the brain, it's fucking, sure, it was awesome when Pride was there, but it's, it's that life dome now, let's just, that life dome, alright, so the, uh, and so he's not going to be on the card. Uh, any of these, you know, Corgan Hall cards that are happening. Uh, the Summer Struggle to end out the Summer Struggle Tour. Then you also have, you know, Tanahashi becoming the U.S. champion. He's also not going to be on any of these cards because, of course, you have to quarantine for 14 days. Uh, so, you know, he's not going to be able to be at the shows. Uh, obviously coming out of the United States back to Japan. So, uh, you don't have that match going to be built up. Or the Shingo Evil match, which I'm fine with. <laughs> you can not build that at all. That'd be great. Uh, but the Abushi, you know, Tanahashi, it doesn't like it. Doesn't need any more build or anything like six mans or eight mans. Doesn't need it. But uh, as far as just kind of New Japan goes, it's uh, I mean, it's not their fault. You know, a lot of this has not been their fault. You know, with COVID restrictions and whatnot. Obviously, you you want to side on the side of caution and in siding and aware. I mean, most of those guys have gotten COVID over the past year, which is, it just sucks, you know, and it's something that you, it's probably going to affect those guys for who knows how long, maybe for the rest of their lives, like, we, we really have no idea, you know, and, uh, that's the scary thing about COVID, but, uh, for Shingo, if he does end up dropping the belt to evil, it, it would definitely be a death blow for, uh, the, the New Japan fan base, I think a lot of, you know, the Fairweather fans, as I, I call them, or the fans who kind of came for the Elite and then are kind of still hanging on, even though the Elite are gone, you know, type of thing, who have kind of just become fans, in the, you know, I would say, the past four or five years. And uh, they, like, I feel like most of them have already jumped ship to AEW already, but if they haven't, they probably will, you know, eventually. It just seems like that's where most people are probably going to go, which is, you know... I, I'm not surprised. I think a lot of those fans who came in the past couple of years just were kind of the, riding the wave of New Japan being the best company in the world. And now that they're not, 
now that AEW is absolutely killing it in the states as well also too like obviously a lot of foreign fans they want to watch probably a native like u.s uh company so that's far where they're gonna switch their kind of eyes to but uh you know as far as me go as far as uh myself i'm uh i you know i'm gonna be here till till the end <laughs> you know at japanese for us i uh i love it so much even if it's new japan's on the down downward slide I'm gonna be there to see it fall. <laughs> I'm gonna see. I'm gonna be there for the crash and fall, and I'm still gonna be, you know, watching all Japan, watching Pro Wrestling, watching Dragon Gate, watching Wrestle or uh, Zero One, watching uh, any DDT, just watching, watching it all. And uh, the biggest thing is, there's always gonna be something out there for me to watch as far as Japanese Pro Wrestling goes. It can't all be terrible. You know what I mean? Like it, it just can't all be bad. You know, Big Japan's still doing some fun stuff with Strong Big Japan. And uh, you, you have Pro Wrestling Noah seems to be back on an upswing, and also with the the N1 victory coming up this year, or this month, rather. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun there. That's four blocks, too, which is going to be nuts. Uh, you know, that seems to be what they're going for, is spreading out the blocks and making it a little bit different compared to, like, all Japan's Champion Carnival and New Japan's G1, which I understand. And, uh, yes, uh, I mean, you, I, I got that to look forward to in, in the following month. If, you know, this... Uh, MetLife Dome show does not go well. But, uh, and then, you know, this uh, Summer Struggle Tour. Some fun stuff happening to end out the tour. Uh, the biggest, honestly, for me, is uh, two New Young Lions debuting. As Yohei Oiwa, which I've been told the R is silenced by native Japanese speakers. So, uh, if it's not, then it's Ryo, Ryo A. Oiwa. But from what I've been told, the R is silent. I could be, they, they could be wrong, or they could have been fucking with me, uh, either way, uh, so, Yohei Oiwa, and then, Kosei, uh, Fujita, two new young lines, always exciting, always fun, you know, the new debuts, uh, hopefully this goes better than what poor Yuto Nakashima, who, in his debut against, uh, Yo Yuimura at the Castle Attack Road 2, Castle Attack Tour, so, I mean, this uh, this class is going to be interesting because, you know, weirdly with uh, Vegeta, he's too, he was born in the year 2002, which is fucking crazy, you know? Like, just crazy to think about uh, as far as someone born in the early 2000s now is able to <laughs> be an active pro wrestler. Just crazy. Uh, time is passing us all by. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, obviously, how that match is going to go, you know, it's going to go to the time limit. I think they're going to have a couple of matches throughout the tour to end out it, uh, which that's that's always fun, obviously, getting those guys as much reps as possible. Uh, but, you know, the class so far looks to be pretty, you know, I'm assuming there'll be probably one, maybe even two more people to make it, like, five. But right now they got three in that current group of uh, New Japan Young Lions. I'm sure they'll make it four or even five, you know, that usually three's a little on the smaller side, so I, I figured to expect one or two more, probably after the G1, would be my guess, uh, they would probably debut probably in November, and then, you know, get, uh, you, you, they'll have their, their crew, their, uh, crop of guys, until, uh, you know, until they leave on excursion in, well, probably 2023, <laughs> so, we'll, uh, see those guys, uh, then, but, you know, obviously, they'll be in the, the undercard, losing a lot, uh, the old guard is going to beat the fuck out of them, uh, so that should be a, a lot of fun, they might have to get, uh, Destroyed by Suzuki a couple of times. Uh, be ready for that. And then to end out the tour, the final night, it is uh, Hiromu Takahashi's return match. is taking on Doki in the main event. Uh, you know, that's... Obviously, Hiromu's going to win. Obviously, being in the... Uh, I want to say it's the co-main. Maybe it's not even the co-main of uh, one of the uh, MetLife Dome shows. I believe it's the second night. He's taking on, obviously, new champion uh, Robbie Eagles. Which is tough, because I love Robbie Eagles. I love that he became champion. But I just don't see them not putting the belt back on Romu. I personally think Romu should be up in the you know, heavyweight division. That, that would be my opinion. Put him in the G1, you know, and that would be huge. I don't think they're going to do it, though. I think he'll probably win, and then he'll, you know, they'll have the best Super Junior, obviously. And then maybe next year they'll bring him up. But I just think it's time. I think it's been time. You know, he's just kind of been injured a couple of years. And I think it's kind of slowed the progress of him moving up. That's kind of a New Japan 
quarrel I've always had is uh, a lot of their top juniors, they kind of wait a little too long to push them up into the heavyweight division. Uh, sometimes it's perfect. You know, I think Kenny Omega, they did it at the perfect time. But that was also kind of out of necessity. But like a guy like Kushida should have moved up, but they never did, and then he left. Uh, hopefully, I don't think Rome was going to leave or anything like that, but hopefully they uh, move him up into the heavyweight division. Because, I mean, he's just a star. Like, that's there's no other way around it. He's a star. He's incredible. I get why they wouldn't want him to move up. Because then I just leave Bushi as the only junior in uh, the division. Or in uh, LIJ, rather. But uh, I, I think it's just time. You know, you have Naito. You have Sonata. You have Hiromu. Shingo. You know, I think that four is, is a crazy four to have. And, you know, maybe they'll have someone kind of branch out of LIJ. You, you know, to kind of maybe not do a full-on turn, but maybe, though. Yeah, I don't think a turn would be necessary, but maybe in the next couple of years, Ghetto will try to freshen up something on the roster and start a new stable, but who knows? You know, they, they just had the United Empire last year, so I don't think they're in a too crazy of a hurry to create a new stable, but uh, things are changing, though, you know, with uh, so much is going on, like show. You know, where is he going to go after turning on... Uh, on turning on show or turning on yo rather uh, but who knows what, where he's gonna go you know that's uh, another thing to look forward to he's probably not gonna stay in chaos but where's he gonna go i definitely shouldn't go to bullet club you know bullet club is packed uh united empire would be weird i don't think it, it'd be needed um you know he, he'll, he'll just kind of be a man without a country which is very odd for new japan that's usually never a thing that happens so, i mean maybe I don't know. I don't think he's a big enough star to like have his own group. So who knows what they're gonna do with Show? But the show's awesome. First of all, I mean he's he's the man. But I just don't think as far as like who's the main faces of the stables. It's usually you know heavyweight guys. You know Okada, Chaos, you know Naito, Lij, and then obviously United Empire. You get fucking Ospreys, dumbass, and then <laughs> you know the, the head of the Lion Marks probably Tanahashi and. It, you know, it goes on and on from there, but it's, a, it's an interesting position that shows in because he's in a prime spot to move up, actually, into the heavyweight division. I think it's probably a little too soon, honestly. Uh, then you know, here I was talking about how Hiromu, it's taken long, it's taken too long, but now with Show, I think it's too soon. Uh, who knows? You know, we're at the mercy of Ghetto to end out uh, the Summer Struggle Tour. They're not, like, crazy shows. You know, they're not shows I would say is are must-see. But definitely, you know, the New Japan Young Line debuts are always fun. And then, uh, probably, you know, the Hiromu comeback match should be a lot of fun. I think Corey Finale is going to be jam back to see him back. So, yeah, exciting stuff to happen. And just a little monthly <laughs> New Japan update from me. As, uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next week. As I'm going to preview the uh, MetLife Dome shows.